Hello everyone and welcome to the overview video for Waterline 3.0. In this video we're going to have a look at some of the new features, actors and tools that are included with the latest update to Waterline. Chief amongst these being the new shallow water simulation system that allows for interaction between uh, characters, objects and NPCs. So to start us off, we're going to have a look at the infinite waterline actor, which you currently see on screen. Some of the settings that you might see initially are quite familiar, as they are from the previous waterline releases, such as uh, water surface material, underwater surface material, underwater post-processing material, and a new feature called far water material, which is essentially the material being applied beyond this box that you can see here. This is a more optimized material that uh, doesn't use uh, tessellation or displacement as at this range these details are not really needed. Uh, next we have the displacement wave height, tile, speed and texture, the screen offset setting as well. If you would like to have, to have more details on these features, have a, have a look at our previous tutorials where we go over them in great detail. So, first off, we have the water simulation settings. At the top, we have the simulation height, which controls the displacement waves. If we set that to zero, we can see that we still have normal simulation going on, but we have no uh, height generated. If we set that to a high value such as 10, we see our characters and objects are generating really high waves. Uh, personally, I recommend keeping this to a value of around 2 or 3, 2.5 or 3.5, as this gives the most uh, normal looking waves. Next we have simulation range, and that essentially controls the canvas, or area in which all objects will generate uh, simulation waves. Uh, have this at values like uh, 8 or 7, as lower values can sometimes cause simulation bleeding. Having this at high value can sometimes produce uh, blobby, low-quality um, simulation waves, but you could uh, fix those by increasing the simulation resolution below. Looking at the simulation resolution, that basically controls the accuracy at which the waves are being produced. For a simulation range of 8, a value of 720 is quite good. So uh, let's see what happens when we change this value. If we go for something high, such as a 2K simulation, we see that the waves get a little bit noisier, but we're not really getting any different uh, results. The quality is pretty much the same, but performance can suffer greatly. So keep this as low as possible. Once again, at a range of 8, 720 is pretty good. If we go for something really low, like 512, we could see that the simulation waves are now getting more blobby, more smooth. And if we go for something really low, like 10, we're starting to have some real precision issues, such as the simulation having trouble tracking where the character is at this point. If we go for a value like 300, we could see that we are getting some fairly good results with some simulation, but we do lose some of the details, but performance will be uh, twice as good as at 720. So keep in mind for low-end systems. Next we have the simulation texture resolution, and that is the resolution of the displacement and normal waves that are being projected onto our water. Um, at this range and resolution, 1600 is pretty good. We can go with a really high value here, such as a 4K texture, but we're not really seeing any difference at all. While well, performance might suffer a little bit. Generally, this setting doesn't have that much of a performance impact, such as the render resolution, but can have a negative impact if kept too low. For example, if we go to a 256 texture, we can see that we're having some artifacts, some pixelation, and some uh, flickering with the textures. So 
So a value of 1600 is generally the way to go. Next we have simulation speed, and that essentially controls the speed at which the waves that are produced will disperse. Do not set this to a value of 0, uh, I guess the lowest value is 0 0.0001 that will go, as a value of 0 will crash the editor. But let's see what happens if we do a value of 30. So what we can get is a more gel-like uh, slow motion behavior from the waves, whereas if we go with a higher value of something like uh, 120, we can see that the waves generated disperse very quickly. This almost makes the water look uh, smaller scale, maybe like a puddle. So a value of 60 is right about where you would get the most uh, normal water uh, behavior, I would say. Next, we have velocity trigger, and this is essentially a speed limit below which objects and actors will not trigger water simulation. Now, if we were to set this at zero, all objects will cast waves all the time, as essentially we have removed this validation part. If we set this to a really high number, like 1000, we could see that almost nothing casts a simulation wave right now, as nothing moves close to that speed. If we go to something close to 500, we could see that our character is actually going faster than 500, but it's very difficult to get objects to travel past that speed. So a value of 100 is generally a good place to go. Next, we have the option of use simulation tags. If we enable this, only objects with the actor tag splash will be part of the simulation. Other objects, as the white boxes, will be ignored, while the orange boxes, which do have this tag, will cast water simulation. To, to view the tags, we can simply go to the tags and we can see the actor tag splash there. This can be a great way for optimization if you don't need every single object to cast uh, waves. But by default we have it turned off as this is generally not too expensive to calculate. Next we're going to go into simulation which might bring an error or two. For one, the water simulation will not work in this mode, but we can view what the water buoyancy too. So the first two options gravity and water density essentially control how far up or down the objects will float once in the water. If we set this to uh, these values, we could see that they will pretty much float on the surface. The default values do a generally a good job of uh, showing a realistic behavior. In water, linear and angular damping is basically the damping that objects will show while they're in the water, and the default the values that will be assigned to these settings once an object leaves the water. Much like the simulation, we also have a tag system for the buoyancy when needed, that when enabled, you will see that only um, actors with a component tag float will float and everything else will sink. So this is pretty good for simulating heavy objects, such as bricks or rocks that need to be ignored essentially. So, something worth noting about the infinite waterline actor is that this yellow box here represents its activation box. And if we go into play, we can see that it actually follows the player around as it moves. So, what is the point of it? Well, since it's a waterline play, uh, an infinite play, we would like the activation box to be also infinite and move with us. But we do have some scenarios where it will not be useful. In this case, however, we see the two activation boxes are intersecting each other, and basically, during that time, simulation is being active on both uh, surfaces. That is not ideal, so one way to change that is to change the height limit of the activation box for the infinite water sim actor. To do that, select the actor, find the activation box in the components menu, and simply shrink it down. This original setting was in, intended to be active if an object is pushed on a very high cliff, but you could easily tweak it into something more manageable. Now in this other extreme case, we could see that the simulation is active while we're in it, 
but if we jump on this platform, it will become disabled. Uh, if we go to the uh, localized water sim actor, we can see that there is a particular box now that is ignoring what we previously mentioned was the velocity limit of 100. This is necessary, for example, if you have objects such as a uh, rotor or something of a fan inside the water, which will not necessarily have velocity in itself, but will rotate and you would expect it to still create waves. To achieve this behavior, you need to add the actor tag of on, uh, which we can see right here. Once this uh, tag is added, an object will always, always spawn waves. And uh, now, just to quickly go over the activation box for the localized uh, water sim actor, it works pretty much as a normal activation box. It will not follow the player around, but if you want to change any properties, simply select it from the menu once again and position it and scale it as you see fit. This is pretty useful to scale it to the size of a room that maybe has an indoor pool or, or an area and have the simulation uh, cut off as soon as the player leaves the area and is no longer visible. One final note I would like to discuss is that there is a certain limita limitation that you need to keep in mind when working with the simulation resolution within the water simulation. And that is that the value there must not exceed the value of your current monitors uh, smallest size. For example, in the Full HD monitor, this value should ideally not exceed 1050. Uh, give yourselves a few extra pixels there just in case. Uh, normally, a value of 720 is pretty good, as almost any screen running Unreal Engine will be at least a Full HD screen. For example, you can go a bit further with a 4K screen. You can allow yourself to have uh, a 2K texture, but if we do that on this particular screen, you can see that right now in the viewport there is no issue, but if we're going to play, we're getting some pretty horrible artifact. Now, to fix this, you must uh, go in the editor, uh, fix the value, and actually restart the editor to get uh, the waterline to display properly. So it's uh, something that you just need to be aware. Uh, if we go for 720 and make the screen really small and then return it to Full HD once again, this is not an issue. It's just that normally try to keep it around 720 or a 1K image.